So here, let's see. Okay, we'll do this verse. 28 is the actual verse for the day. And we'll start with this. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvita 
Bhakti Chandra Dhyay Ghor Bhakti Vrinda Dhyay Dhyaya Dvita Chandra Dhyaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Dhyaya Dhyaya Sri Chaitanya Dhyaya Nityananda Dhyaya Dvita Chandra Dhyaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda We're reading from Adi Lila, chapter 6, The Glories of Sri Advaita Charya. So we'll do verse 20 for the chanting, and then it'll go on to 28. Hmm. Advaita Rupakari Shakta Sancharana Ateva Advaita Hyena Mukha Karana Maybe we'll just do one line. Advaita Rupakari Shakti Sacharana. Advaita Rupakari Shakti Advaita Hyena Mukha Karana. Advaita Rupakara Shakti Sancharana. Atveva Advaita Hyena Mukha Karana. Advaita Rupakari Shakti Sancharana. Atveva Advaita Hyena Mukha Karana. Advaita Rupe in the form of Advaita Acharya. Kare does Shakti Satcharana, infusion of the energy. Ateva, therefore, Advaita, Advaita Acharya, Hyena is Mukya Karana, the original cause. Okay, so this whole chapter, which is quite long, I think there's about 300 verses in this chapter. No, actually 130 about. Purports are really, really long in this chapter. Okay, so translation, in the form of Advaita, he infuses the material ingredients with creative energy. Therefore, Advaita is the original cause of creation. Hmm. Next verse, Sri Advaita is the creator of millions and millions of universes, and by his expansions as Garbhadakshayi Vishnu, he maintains each and every universe. Sri Advaita is the principal limb Anga of Narayana. Srimad Bhagavatam speaks of limb Anga as a plenary portion, Amsa, of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
verse 23. O Lord of lords, you are the seer of all creation. You are indeed everyone's dearest life. Are you not therefore my father, Narayan? Narayan refers to those abode in the water born from the Nara, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, and that Narayan is your plenary portion. All of your plenty portions are transcendental. They are absolute and are not creations of Maya. This verse is from the Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 14, 14. That means it was spoken by Lord Rama. <laughs> This verse, next verse, this verse describes that the limbs and the plenary portions of the Lord are all spiritual. They have no relationship with the material energy. To text 25, why has Sri Advaita been called a limb and not a part? The reason is that limb implies greater intimacy. Hmm. Sri Advaita is the reservoir of all virtues is the main limb of Mahavishnu. He is his full name is Advaita, and he is identical in all respects with the Lord. 27. As he had formerly created all the universes, now he descended to introduce the path of bhakti. And this is verse 28. Jiva Nistarayala, Krishna Bhakta Karadana, Gita Bhagavate Koila, Bhakti Ter Avkyana. Vyakyana. He delivered all living beings by offering the gift of Krishna Bhakti. He explained the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the light of devotional service. Purport. By his divine grace, C.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Although Sri Advaita is an incarnation of Vishnu, for the welfare of the conditioned souls, he manifests himself as a servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and throughout all of his activities, he showed himself to be an, an eternal servitor. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda all mani also manifested the same principle, although they also belong to the category of Vishnu. If Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, and Dvaita had exhibited their all-powerful Vishnu potency within the material world, people would have become greater impersonalists, monists, and self-worshippers than they had already become under the spell of this age. Why? Why is that? Why, if they had manifested their all-powerful, the people would become greater, as it says here, impersonalists, monists, and self-worshippers? Who knows? Maharaj, I know you you know all these things, but let's see what the devotees can. Yes. Maybe because uh, people in this age are not so intelligent that they could understand what they're seeing, and they could relate it in a different way. Then... No, that's cur part, partly cur correct, but there's more to it, yes. Then they would see like you have three gods. Hmm? So you have three gods. Do you have three? Gods. Gods. So how would, then how would they would become greater in personalists and monists because of that? Because you have one God and everybody is serving them. But if you have three of them, then probably everybody is going to be one. That's the point. There you go. If they would exhibit himself in that way, then everyone says, well, we are also the supreme, or many persons anyway. So they would be pretentious, you know, incarnations or so-called... Uh, you know, gods. <laughs> so that's the reason. Okay. Therefore, the personality of Godhead in his different incarnations and forms play the part of devotees to instruct the conditioned soul how to approach the transcendental stage of devotional service. That is the rest of the answer. Advaita Acharya especially intended to teach the conditioned souls about devotional service. The word Acharya means teacher. The special function of such a teacher is to make people Krishna conscious. A bona fide teacher following in the footsteps of Advaita Acharya has no other business than to spread the principles of Krishna consciousness all over the world. The real qualification of an Acharya is that he presents himself as a servant of the Supreme. 
Such a bona fide acharya can never support the demoniac activities of atheistic men who present themselves as God. It is the main business of an acharya to defy such impostors posing as God before the innocent public. So we see how much Prabhupada spoke out against all these so-called cheaters. Not so-called cheaters, actual cheaters. <laughs> Prabhupada was strong on that. He said, before you can actually establish what is truth, you have to establish what is not truth. Because people will mix everything together. Yeah. Okay, Om Gyan, Timidandasya, Ginajana, Salakaya, Chaksu, Unmilitam, Yena, Tas, My Shri, Gurude Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Tadati Swam Padanti Kam Namahum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pachadine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa, Tarubhischa, Kripa Sindhu Pebhacha, Tititanam Pavane Vyo, Vaishnave Vyo, Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Sivasati, Gaur, Bhakta Rindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. As a verse in the well, I'll read that later. Um, Advaita Acharya is mentioned in a few other places that he's a dual manifestation of two personalities, Mahavishnu primarily, and also Sadashiva. Because we also see how Sadashiva is actually connected with Mahavishnu in the form of creation. As uh, when Mahavishnu glances over the, well, the aggregate of the material energy known as the Pradhan that agitates these elements within the Pradhan which are the ingredients for creation and then Brahma comes along and formulates the different forms under the guidance of Krishna. And so this, um, this glancing is actually Sadashiva, that glance, it's a, it's a bright halo that emanates from the vision of Mahavishnu. So these two together uh, manifest themselves as Sri Advaita Chari. Therefore, he is called Supreme Personality of Godhead. So it's interesting in this particular manifestation, there were three persons who are the Supreme Lord, and one who is the Shakti energy of the Lord, which is practically as good as the Lord. So we find that uh, in this age, because the age is so needed for mercy, the Lord not, doesn't come in one form, he comes in four. As Prabhupada said, he actually comes in five. He said, Prabhupada says, the, the impersonalists say God is one, and we say God is five. So there is not just one, there are five manifestations of the Absolute Truth who appear to perform the activities of the conditioned souls in order to teach, as is mentioned here, the process of pure devotional service from the point of view of example, by teaching by example. When you teach by words, that is important, but when you teach by example, that has more effect upon a person who is trying to learn. And that, that is also more of a, what we say, established form of teaching because sometimes people's words don't line up with their activities. But then when your activities are actually ideal, then that is the best form of teaching. So here we get a little bit of an insight of who a Sri Advaita is. Of course, as it mentions here in the eighth uh, chapter of Antya Lila, verse number four, 
It says Jaya Jaya Dvaita Ishvara Avatar, Krishna Avatar Ikoila Jagat Nistara. All glories to Advaita Prabhu, the incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He induced Krishna to descend and thus delivered the entire world. So I'll read a little bit of something about his appearance. On the seventh day of the bright fourth night of the month of Magh, the great ocean of ecstasy swelled to its limits, being forcibly attracted by the moon of Advaita, who appeared from the womb of Sri Nabi Devi as the moon appears in the autumn sky. His father, Sri Kuvera Pandit, floated in that ocean of joy. In great happiness, he gave many gifts and charity to the brahmanas, who voluntarily accept vows of poverty. Very quickly, he approached the maternity room to get a glimpse of the newborn son. Then his own face began to shine by the reflected light of that moon-like personage. The residents of Navagram came running to see the child. Everyone remarked that they had never seen such a beautiful baby. What a pious, what a pious activities, what pious activities his father must have performed to get such a jewel of a son and that in such his old age. Thus, Ganesham sings about this occasion. The child was named Mangal, Mangala, and later he was named Kamalaksha, which means lotus eyed. Okay, so then there's a little bit more here. So there are, we have to get an understanding of the nature of the personalities as they perform in their position as the absolute supreme lord before we can really get a beginning to understand their pastimes. Because if we don't know, uh, we will think that their activities are ordinary. They, they look ordinary to the ordinary eyes, but they are not. They're extraordinary. They're transcendental. So this point is very much needed. That's why everything in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita is, establishes the principle of the tattva, and later on we go into lila. So lila can never be fully grasped unless there is a working understanding, at least to some degree, of the truth of the absolute nature of the absolute truth. <laughs> so then we understand that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mahavishnu, and he appeared in order to, and he appeared before Lord Chaitanya as it's mentioned here. And so I guess I'll ask you a, a question. What was the age of Advaita Charya when Lord Chaitanya appeared? Who knows? Anybody know? It's written a few times. Hmm? Hmm? A little younger. <laughs> Maharaj? Hmm. Okay. It's 50. He was 52. He was 52. Okay, second half of the question. What was his age when Lord Chaitanya disappeared? Yeah, he, he actually, yeah, he, 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 he disappeared in 1559. He, he's over 100, yeah. 52, Yeah, that adds, adds up to 120. But no, 52 and 48 is 100. That's right. But then again, it says that uh, it gives a different number. <laughs> says he was 125. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He lived, tw that's what I mean. He, uh, oh, okay, that was a wrong, I posed the question wrong. What was his age when he disappeared? Okay. He was 125 years old. And he was still dancing. <laughs> he was still dancing. Of course, he's God, but anyway. He is teaching us that this is the process
for worshiping the Lord in this age. Uh, there are many wonderful uh, pastimes connected with Sri Advaita. Of course, the foremost and the one that is often spoken on is that Advaita Charya, because he has this very deep compassion in nature, and at that time in Sri Navadvip Dham, there weren't too many people actually performing pure devotional service. Most of the people were Shakta worshippers, worshippers of the different deities, the demigods. In fact, it's described in, in Chaitanya Mangala, I believe, and maybe in also in Chaitanya Bhagavat, that um, uh, people would worship the, de the devas, and they would make deities of the different devas, and then they would pray to them and worship them in different ways to get material benedictions. And then after the benedictions were given, they would take the deity and throw it in the Ganga. <laughs> that was how they honored their worshipful deity. So, and then there was marriages of cats and dogs that was going on. When material society becomes more and more frustrated by the attempt to enjoy, they come up with more and more attempts to enjoy it in more strange and abominable ways. That is a natural progression of the degradation of society. So society was really becoming degraded. And hardly any, there was a small group of devotees there, there was Mukunda was there, there was uh, Haridas Thakur was there, Dvaita Chari was in Shantipur, there was Srivas Thakur, Srivas Thakur's family. There weren't too many devotees, there was a few others. And Advaita was really feeling angry, seeing how the conditioned souls were wasting their lives in sense gratification. So it's described that he, he, he thought to himself, or maybe he expressed it, Jai Sri Pancha Tattva Ki Jai, that uh, I would like to take out my chakra and just, you know, get rid of them all. Because <laughs> their lives are useless. <laughs> There's no, no, no meaning. They can't understand, nor they are going to take to devotional service, because there was some attempt to spread Krishna consciousness then, but people were not interested, like today. And so then he decided, well, this is the work of the, uh, the absolute supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. So he, of course, he understood that it was time for the Lord to appear anyway, but he made his pl prayer in the form of going to the bank of the Ganga and uh, sitting down and creating a little altar with uh, shalagram shilas, and then he worshiped with Ganga water and tulsi leaves, sandalwood paste, offering very loud, emotional, explanations of prayers to the Supreme Lord in order to bring him to come and do the work of helping the conditioned souls out of their illusion. So it's describing he was also offering flowers. This is an interesting little pastime. As he was offering the flowers, he would also take the flower and then throw it into the Ganga. It just how happens Mother Sachi Mata, who was the mother, would be the would-be mother of Lord Chaitanya, would be bathing in a different part of the, of the Ganga area, in one of the ghats. And these flowers would float down. And she was pregnant when she was bathing, and it would hit her in her womb, in her stomach area, the flower, and that would cause a miscarriage. <laughs> so Advaita Charya did that eight times, <laughs> causing eight miscarriages to Sachimata. <laughs> yeah, these are, so, you know, those of you who have problems with that, you can read the, the narration here. <laughs> so then, of course, 
That was simply, just like Narada Muni was speeding up the appearance of Lord Krishna by encouraging Kamsa. So in the same way, he was speeding up the appearance of the Lord in, by offering these flowers. And of course, it is explained that the Lord appears for six reasons, two, three internal and three external. And his internal reasons are the prominent reasons, but the external reasons are, one of them is because to satisfy the desire of Advaita Charya, that's one of the reasons why uh, Sri Chaitanya Krishna came in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the other reason is, you know, to enact the Yuga Dharma. And the last one was, yeah, well, they, these are combined. At, the Lord says, whenever there's a, a rise of irreligion, I come. So all these three reasons are mentioned as the external reasons for the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so uh, Advaita Charya was very instrumental in bringing about the appearance of the Lord. Now, there are many wonderful pastimes. Of course, when the Lord was born, this is mentioned in this section here. Um, his wife, Sita Takarani, Sita Devi, when she heard the child was born to Sachimata in the area of Navadweep, she sent gifts and also came herself to see the child and brought many, many wonderful, wonderful gifts. And, and auspicious things and wonder, wonderful forms of boga to be offered to the new child. And of course she personally came. Now Lord Chaitanya, he was uh, a little different type of child. He would cry when there was no chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. But when they would chant, he would stop. And then he would sometimes get up on his little hind legs and dance for everyone's pleasure. So Sita Takarani was there and she would chant in order for Lord Chaitanya to dance and, and, and feel happy. Huh? Uh, well, mostly his wife was coming, you know. He, he, it doesn't mention so much he came to see the I think it said it mentions he came. But she would come regularly, and then she would bring gifts also. And so, as time went on, of course, there were many... I'm going to narrate some of these wonderful pastimes between Lord Chaitanya and Advaita Chari, because some of them are so... In, um, full of important spiritual messages. There's one, there was one servant of Advaita Charya called Kamalakanta Vishwasu. Mm -hmm. Kamalakanta Vishwasu was an assistant and servant of Advaita Acharya. And uh, one time he wrote a note which got back or got to the hands of Lord Chaitanya. In the note it said that Sri Advaita Charya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he has a debt of 300 rupees to the king of Puri, Jagadat Puri. Hmm. So when Lord Chaitanya read the note, he became quite angry. <laughs> He's calling the Supreme Personality of Godhead an ordinary debtor. <laughs> so the Lord, it's described in, I think it's in the 10th chapter of, um, can uh, somebody flash onto the, this again? <clears throat> Go to uh, Adi Lila, chapter 10, verse number 20. And it's a really a wonderful pastime. You can see how the Lord really reacts in, you know, complete concern about what is being said here. 
So this is yeah, Adi Lila, chapter 10, verse 20, and it goes on for a few verses. And so Lord Chaitanya, when he heard, immediately he said, he gave out word, I don't want to ever see Kamala Kanta Vishvasu again. Of course, it's mentioned that Kamala Kanta Vishvasu, when he heard that, he was very unhappy. But Dwaita Chari immediately came to see the Lord and said, My dear Lord, how can you give such mercy to Kamala Kanta Vishvasu? Why are you depriving of me of such mercy? <laughs> so he was explaining how that one gets recognized by the Lord either in a favorable way or an unfavorable way. That is considered to be mercy. <laughs> no, we're not getting it? So we have to do things according to the sequence. First the light and then the form. <laughs> yeah, it's chapter 10. Okay, and verse number 20. Okay, keep going, it's verse 20. Um, keep going, maybe it's not verse 20. <laughs> verse 21, no, I guess I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> okay, so, can't remember where it is then. Anyway, I'll narrate the pastime as much as I can remember the details. <clears throat> Yeah, but basically it's Lord Chaitanya becoming up, upset and then Advaita Charya come, coming and, and saying that he has never received such mercy. And then uh, when Advaita Charya said that, <laughs> Lord Chaitanya changed. He said that he again gave Kamala Kanta Vishvasu because he was thinking you know, I'm punishing him, but Advaita Charya was thinking, no, you're actually benedicting him. <laughs> so when Lord Chaitanya heard that, he said, all right, then he can come and see, see us again. He can come and see me again. <laughs> and then, because Advaita Charya also wanted to get recognized by the Lord, but the Lord wouldn't really honor him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so he would do different things to somehow or other uh, disturb the Lord so he would get recognized or honored. So nothing worked. Finally, he decided to really hit the heart of the Lord where the Lord really has his strong feelings of understanding it, and that is in the philosophy. So Advaita Charya went and he was going regularly in the evening to hear from people who are speaking yoga vashishta, <laughs> which is a kind of an impersonal understanding of the absolute truth. It is, it's impersonal. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, the word got back to him what Advaita was doing. He uh, became really concerned. And so he was thinking how to respond to this. So this was going on for some time. Then no, the Dwaita one time was at his place in Shantipur. And the Lord said to, Lord Chaitanya said to Lord Nityananda, I think we should go see a Dwaita. So together they began their trip from Navadweep to Shantipur. And they traveled along the, the Ganga. The Ganga connects both of these places. 
And then finally, as they were walking, Lord Chaitanya saw this house, little hut. And he said to the Lord Nityananda, who lives there? And Lord, Chay Lord Nityananda said, oh, I think there's a sannyasi who lives there. Really? We should get his blessings. Okay. So they went in, and there was this elderly person, and he was... He was dressed somewhat like a sannyasi, combination of different things, some sannyas and something else. And so Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya sat down, and the sannyasi welcomed him. And then Lord Chaitanya thought, well, maybe we should ask him some questions. Because it says when you come in contact with a senior person, saintly person, you should uh, inquire into something that will be relevant to your progress in spiritual life. Just like <laughs> nowadays, <laughs> I'm just reminded of something. I had a one, uh, you know, interview or discussion with one aspiring disciple. So. The opening thing that I said, well, what, 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 what would you like to ask? What would you like to talk about? And he started off to saying, hey, Maharaj, how are you? How's things going? Where are you? And I thought, well, that's not the way you, you approach it. <laughs> he wanted to get into some ordinary chit-chat, you know? And I said, well, get to the point. What, why are you, you know? <laughs> Finally, he got the message. So this is the people don't really understand how to approach in these days. They just, you know, I mean, it's like, like it's the Joe down the street, you know. And therefore, as Prabhupada said, they don't get anything from that interaction because only when one is in the proper mood does the Lord inspire his devotee to give to that person what they what they really need to hear or to answer their questions otherwise there is a withholding of information based on the fact that there is the, con the connection is not right so in this case lord chaitanya said to the sannyasi what is the goal of life and the, the sannyasi said, well, in this age of Kali, the goal of life is that people should be happy by engaging in various activities such as eating and drinking. And Lord Chaitanya said, well, that's not the goal of life. The goal of life is actually, and then Lord Chaitanya gets, is to worship the Supreme Personality, Sri Krishna, in, in devotion. And then the sannyasi said, just see, here we are. And these young persons who have just come out of the womb of their mother, they're instructing us <laughs> about what is correct. So Lord Nityananda could see there was some tension <laughs> building, so he said, well, why don't we just have some prashadam? <laughs> and the sannyasi said, all right. So then he went and he called his wife, because he was a grihasta sannyasi. <laughs> he called his wife and asked her to bring in some foodstuffs. So Lord Chaitanya said, he said, actually, well, you know, today I'm actually fasting, so just bring a little fruit, that'll be enough. No, no, you're my guest. We, we, should, we have to make, we should please the guests. Would you like some bliss? <laughs> Bliss. <laughs> and so he's so Lord Chaitanya looked at Lord Nityananda and says, What does he mean by bliss? <laughs> well, he wants to know if you want some wine. <laughs> and so Lord Chaitanya said looked at Lord Nityananda and said, Let's go. <laughs> so they ran out and immediately they jumped in the Ganga. <laughs> because they felt like they had been contaminated by this association. <laughs> and then they'd, after drying themselves off, they 
went down and continued on their way. And finally, they arrived at Shantipur. Advaita Charya was there along with his wife, Sita Thakurani, and Haridas Thakur happened to be there also. Because Haridas Thakur and Advaita Charya, it's mentioned in other places, Haridas Thakur, while Advaita Charya was praying for Lord Chaitanya to come, Haridas was also praying in the form of offering the Maha Mantra for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. So they were both, they were, they were kind of associates in, in, in many ways. So when Lord Chaitanya appeared in the area where Advaita Charya's place was, and he saw Advaita Charya from a distance, then his anger again arose, and he was like Rudra. <laughs> and this time he, he started to run full speed, and he came up to Advaita Charya, and with his fists, he started punching him <laughs> on the head. And he was beating him. And the Dwaita Chari was feeling, oh, this is so nice. I finally got the mercy I've been looking for. <laughs> and Sita Takarani was yelling, you'll kill him. He's an old man. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. But Lord Chaitanya didn't hear anything. <laughs> and Hari Das Thakur was laughing. <laughs> Lord Nityananda was also feeling some pleasure as <laughs> described. So finally, Advaita, uh, Lord Chaitanya came to another consciousness and then he said, Advaita, what are you doing? You know I've, co I've come in order to establish the principles of true religion. Why are you teaching this other, this, this bogus Mayavadi stuff? And Dwaita didn't even deal with the, the statement. He said, thank you, my Lord. I've been waiting for this mercy. <laughs> so he, this, this is a very, it's not just an a interesting event of interchange, but there's a great message here that uh, a devotee never wants to be worshipped. A devotee wants to be, wants to be the worshiper. In the material world, the conditioned soul has a tendency to want to be honored, to want to be glorified, to want to be seen in many ways as someone important, significant. But that's contrary to the principle of devotional service. Therefore, it is mentioned that the more one can actually be in the role of a servant, the more one is glorified by the Supreme Lord. As Srila Prabhupada would say, one should aspire to become Gopi Bhattar Padakamalayor, Dasa Dasa. As Lord Chaitanya was teaching, we should aspire to follow in his footsteps, become servant of the servant of the servant. But then again, he added that a hundred times removed. So it's very difficult in this age because this age is, is permeated with this mood of. Everybody is in competition with everyone else for, what, for whatever reason, supremacy. And of course, when people have the same a activities in life, that com competition becomes more severe amongst those persons. So, but a devotee never thinks to, to become a servant actually is glorious. It's actually glorious in the eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of the uh, great souls. So this is what uh, Lord Ch what uh, Advaita Acharya wanted Lord Chaitanya to teach through this 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 particular pastime. That one should become, or one should aspire simply to become the servant. But Lord Chaitanya always worshipped or honored Advaita Acharya as because he was senior in age. And the Lord also knew his position like that. It says that Advaita Charya was also a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Like that. He took it says this, he took initiation from Sri Madhavendra Puri. There was one verse that's in the Bhagavad Gita, 
from the 13th chapter, verse number 14. Sarvata paripanastha sarvate shikshado mukam sarvata sri mam loke. I can't remember the last. Uh, uh, that everywhere is his eyes and faces, hands and legs. In this way, the super soul exists. So, Advaita, when he read this verse, he couldn't understand it, or he was disturbed by it. It seems like this verse is um, propagating the idea of uh, the Lord is impersonal. <laughs> so in order to show his reaction for that, and wanting to get an answer, he started to fast. And then Lord Chaitanya understood the mind of Advaita, and he appeared to Advaita in a dream to give him the knowledge. And then the Lord revealed that actually what is being said is that everywhere is his opulences. And he has many, and he, of course we know the Lord has six primary opulences, all wealth, all fame, all beauty, all knowledge, all strength, and all renunciation. So this was the actual understanding that everywhere is his opulences, like that. Also, there's another story of Advaita Chari again with, um, hmm, I don't want to mess this particular one up. It's mentioned in the last line of Gayatri. There are 24 and a half syllables. And so, uh, Dvaita Charya, when he counted the syllables, he came up with 24. And he couldn't find the other half syllable. And so he was also feeling very distraught. In fact, he planned to fast until death but until or else he got the answer. And finally, Srimati Radharani, understanding the mind of Sri Advaita and what he was doing, and she appeared to him and said, that half syllable is me. <laughs> and then she explained in, in that, uh, that last verse of the, of the uh, Gayatri Mantra, the seventh line that it's, there's a half syllable at the end of one of the words. And he was counting that, in other words, there was two, there was vai, vaya, and he was counting vaya as one. But it was vaya was actually two, the ya is actually Srimati Radharani. So, let's see what else we have here about the Sri Advaita Charya. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a particular mantra that glorifies the Sri Advaita Charya. And this mantra is coming from one scripture called Sri Gora Govinda Charana Sasmarana Padhati. This is verse number two, and this is composed by Dhyana Chandra Goswami. And I'll just read it. I can't. F I couldn't find it anywhere in the shastras. So, but somehow I came across it on my computer. I guess I put it there. <laughs> so I don't remember when I put it or how I got it. So <laughs> I can't give you the re the reference except the reference of what the verse is. Where the verse is coming from. Nistarikta sesha janam dayulam premantrat bon parimagda chittam chaitanya chandam ritam architam tam advaita chandram sirasya namami. And this is spoken by Dhyana Chandra Goswami says, With my head at his feet, I offer my humble obeisances unto the merciful Sri Advaita Charya, whose heart is drowned in the ocean of Prema. He delivers infinite numbers of devotees and is honored and worshipped by Sri 
Chaitanya Chandra. Mm -hmm. So it's it's called it's also called Sri Advaita Pranams. So this is the pranam mantra that is used to offer, honor Sri Advaita Charya. Hmm. Okay, of course I have some prayers here that are, it's called the Sri Advaita Astakam. And it says, let me surrender unto Sri Advaita Charya, whose tulsi leaves, flowers, waters from the Ganga shore, and loud calls of love, worship Lord Gora and begged him to appear. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, attracted by his loud calls, the golden lord of Goloka Vrindavan, who was an ocean of ecstatic love, appeared in Sri Navadweep. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, who, by making the moon of Lord Chaitanya rise, flooded the world with love, even Brahma and the great demigods cannot attain. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, whose mercy is beyond understanding, and by whose request alone the all-powerful Lord Chaitanya disappeared from the world. <clears throat> Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, who is non-different from the form of Lord Mahavishnu, and whose parts and parcels are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, engaged in creation, maintenance, and destruction of the worlds. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, who is worshipped by all, who is attained only by devotional service, and who is heard in a certain Vedic literature. Because he is Lord Shiva's shelter, he has he he, he because he is Lord Shiva's shelter, has a name and glory like Lord Shiva. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, who flooded with love for Lord Chaitanya who is flooded with love for Lord Chaitanya and whose beloved wife Sita Devi and son Achyutananda are also filled with love. So it's mentioned in that Advaita Charya had six sons, um, Achyutananda, Krishnadas, and Gopal were the sons that followed their father. And then there was three others, one was Jagadish, and I can't remember the other two names. Balaram was one, and one more. Th those three became Asara. Asara means useless. Although he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead and had six sons, only three actually adhered to the life of devotion, and the other three became, I think some became impersonalists, and others became materialists, so they weren't so that's mentioned, they were asara. Asara means, although they had a good birth, ideal birth, still they went in the wrong direction. So this is a, an interesting point to note that uh, we see in the other family, in another way that Prahlad Maharaj was uh, born in a family of demons, Daichas, but still he was a great devotee, pure devotee. And uh, when sometimes we have a, people who are born in a family of devotees and they become something else like that. So birth is, an, is a plus accordingly. You know, it means either a plus or a minus. But in other words, it has influence upon the person taking birth. But unless one takes advantage of a good birth, then what is the use? What is the use? <laughs> uh, and we see even today, devotees, uh, their parents are not up to the standard, <laughs> or their parents are something else. And the devotees are, you know, they're trying to help their parents, but the parents don't want to hear anything, and sometimes they threaten. They're influenced by materialistic society. And so this, this goes on, that people born in good families, uh, born in families where their, their parents are not favorable to spiritual life. 
And you might, might ask, well, why is that? Usually we say that karma, when you take birth, you're birthed by karma, so you have similar karma, right? Why is that? Because in some cases, in order to give mercy to certain people, the Lord puts a particular soul in that family to help that person progress. Progress like that. So sometimes, you know, I remember there was one uh, devotee in Chicago. His name was Prashad. That was his initiated name. And we used to call him Prahlad instead because his father was a big demon, <laughs> huge demon. <laughs> and he would cause trouble. So we would, we would call him Prahlad instead of Prashad because his father was <laughs> something else. So you see, yeah, and you'll find this, these examples are there. And of course, Sometimes the families are good and the children are the other way. They go the wrong way and they become materialists or sometimes even, you know, sinful. So birth has an influence, but it is education that makes the difference. At, what is that, that Pallad Maharaj, what does he say? That Komar Archuati Pragya Dharma Bhagavate Praya Praya Iha. And what's the rest of the verse? Manasa Dharma Manasa. Kumar Archuati Pragya Dharma Bhagavate Iha. Manasa Dharma Dharma Manasa. Something. Artadam is the last word. Artadam, yeah. Yeah, so one has to one has to take education. Otherwise one's material tendencies can override. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the pastimes. Of course Lord Chaitanya also appeared to Advaita Charya as the universal form. There's a beautiful painting that circulates around Iskan. You can see when Lord Ch when uh, uh, Advaita Chari is said to to Lord Chaitanya, you know, you showed so much favor to Arjun by showing the universal form. <laughs> so please show me. The Lord Lord Chaitanya didn't want to do it. He said, "You won't like it." <laughs> But he did, and he showed him. You, know, you can see Advaita is overwhelmed with uh, awe when he sees this form. It's nicely painted. In fact, that painting sits in the Chicago Temple in America on the wall there. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the pastimes of Advaita. If there's anyone else would like to add to some of these stories or anything about Dvaita Charya, or if there's any comments or questions, then... Yeah. So it's interesting um, how Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya went to this cottage, this, this looks to be sannyasi, but uh, because they always show some mercy to, to, the, to all the people, so Probably he also got some mercy or, or something because they, they went to his cottage, although he wanted to drink wine or something. Well, that was, that's what he does, not what he does. Yeah, yeah he was a bogus sannyasi. <laughs> <laughs> but he got mercy also, probably, so... He got the, he got the association of the Lord, but he didn't, he didn't really know how to take advantage of it. <laughs> You might say also that <clears throat> there are people who come to our temples and also have the opportunity to associate with devotees and also with the, the Lord, but then they don't really gain anything. They can't take advantage of that. <clears throat> but there is a gyata sakriti. If there's something that is positive 
in their, that association that goes to their credit. But if they commit offenses, that, that's not good. Another question there? No, you're just holding the microphone, okay. Uh, yeah. Let me finish these prayers. I didn't, I only read, uh, <clears throat> Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, whose heart is Lord Goro's eternal home, whose name the Dvaita, because he is not different from Lord Nityananda, who is named Acharya, because he teaches devotional service. I'll read that again. Let me surrender to Sri Advaita Charya, whose heart is Lord Gora's eternal home, who is named Advaita because he is not different, Dwaita, from Lord Nityananda, and who is named Acharya because he teaches devotional service. Now these prayers are are composed by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Mm -hmm. And a last prayer, a person whose intelligence is pure and who every morning happily reads these eight verses glorifying Lord Advaita, the husband of Sita, attains devotion to his lotus feet and becomes dear to him. Okay, so I think that's... I mean, there are a few side little stories here. But that's pretty much what I have as far as presentation. I would suggest the devotees take some time and uh, read more about Sri Advaita on today's occasion. Today, special mercy is available. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Sri Chaitanya Chari Tamrita Ki Jai, Sri Advaita Charya Ki Jai, Sri Advaita Charya Maha Mahotsava Avir Bhav Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.